The media meltdown is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the corporate media pundits are revealing themselves for who they truly are. They are not serious people. For four years, many of the pundits and journalists and commentators at BSDNC, I mean MSNBC, CNN, ABC, CBS, New York Times, Washington Post, you name it, all these people, and yes, I mean all of those people, thought that they knew better than you. They act smug and arrogant, proclaiming that they know more about what's happening every minute of every single day, and they're more in tune with what's happening in America, but they don't. Many of these pundits have a six-figure salary, have a pretty good life, access to the top one percenters, and they are professional stenographers for the corporate establishment. None of these people are creative. Some of them uh, got this, these positions to be anchors because they're Nepo babies. Some of them because they knew how to uh, screw their way to the top. Or maybe you might have one person, two, maybe a handful that have some integrity. But of course, because if you're going to be working for corporate media, you got to sell that out. But their collective meltdowns and their panics has been absolutely pure gold. And this one in particular, Joy Reid. Joy Reid. End quote. If Biden is in a coma, I'm voting for him. This is about keeping Hitler out of the White House. Well, geez, Joy Reid, did you travel back in time to 1941 when the United States got involved in World War II? Because Hitler's dead. First name Adolf, last name Hitler's dead. The Third Reich has been defeated. There's, there's, there's nothing more in Germania. But unless she's comparing Trump to Hitler, again, not in defense of Trump, but Trump and Hitler are two different people altogether. But this is a professional news person. Professional. Now I say this, liberals, out of love. I love you, but you are not serious people case in point right here a journalist folks this is a journalist a reporter y'all just tell me who the nominee is gonna be let me know when you guys are finished fighting amongst yourselves who i gotta vote for in november to keep hitler out the white house that's all i want to know who i gotta vote for to keep hitler out the white house y'all do your thing Play in traffic all you want in front of these Republicans, acting a fool in front of these people instead of privately declaring your stuff. But don't text me no more because I'm not taking no more of these texts. Just let me know when you guys are finished figuring it out, Democrats, because I know y'all the freak out people. Go ahead and freak out. Have your conversation. And then let me know who I got to vote for to keep Hitler out the White House. That's it. I'm done. Oh, and by the way, if it's Biden in a coma, I'm going to vote for Biden in a coma. Biden in a coma. This is what we've been reduced to. Our presidents being puny and weak, childish and immature, senile and confused. We have truly reached the bottom of the barrel. Next thing you know, America is going to have its Romulus Augustus. And if you don't know who Romulus Augustus is, he was the last Roman emperor, a child that surrendered the Western Empire. Watch, we're going to have a, our I'm going to make this prediction. Our last president, his name will be George Washington. Start with George Washington, it'll be end with George Washington. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be somewhere in that iteration. I don't even really particularly like the guy. I, a lot of his policy, don't like him. He's not Donald Trump, right? Yeah, Hitler, White House. We keeping him out, keeping Project 2025 out. That's all I care about. Up and down the ballot from the rooter to the tutor, school board all the way up to White House and everything in between, governors, members of Congress. I'm just going to vote all the way down to keep these people out. The Project 2025 thing is the whole Republican Party. At this point, it's not about Biden. It is not about him. It's above me now. There's a Best Western next door. It is about keeping Donald Trump and his Project 2025 friends out of power. That's it for me, y'all. Y'all let me know what you think. And another thing. <laughs> oh, man. This, this, this is called coping. Okay? Because a lot of the reporters from BSDNC and CNN probably got a lot of text messages from the Democrat donors and people within the Democratic establishment. Not out of the fact that they're trying to get their sage advice or give them stories. But I'm willing to bet at least half of those texts that were received by people at ABC or CBS or MSNBC or CNN. Just my theory. I could be wrong, but I'm willing to bet at least half of those texts were angry texts, 
like saying, you guys reported that Biden was going to be fine. How come none of you ever saw this before? How come none of you ever reported on this before? I'm willing to bet. And that's probably why she is doing this, because she's probably got her fair share of text messages from those within the Democratic establishment and maybe some mega donors, because let's face it, in her profession, she knows those people. She probably, some of those texts might have been, you guys didn't notice. How come you guys weren't reporting on this? You guys were saying everything was fine, which is what ABC was doing, New York Times was doing, CBS, CNN, MSNBC. Am I wrong here? Hey, let's actually have democracy in the chat. Let's have democracy in the chat. And we're going to include the year of 2023 to right now, just these two years. And this is you, the audience. You get to weigh in. But do all of you remember corporate media constantly saying that Biden was OK, that he was sharp? And they never really pushed back against any moments of him being seen out. Yes, there might have been a few blips on the radar. But what, what was it mostly? Ninety nine percent of the time Biden's OK. Type one for. Yeah, yeah, kid. Co you know, co corporate media made that perception that he, Biden was a OK, that, that that he was that he was ready to go or type two. No, it's. It was more nuanced. Corporate media did its job, which is why, which is why this this whole debate performance was was utterly, utterly a shock. It came out of left field. I wonder how many ones we'll get in the chat. I wonder how many ones we'll get in the chat. It's not that I'm rigging the election. It's just that look, I remember 2023 and I remember 2024. And all these people, these reporters, these professionals, this person smiling right here, kept on saying. Biden was A-OK. -okay. I've always got another thing. You guys do know that in 2020, y'all Democrats had choices of young people. You had a young LGBTQ guy, Mayor Pete. You had a Latino. Uh, you had uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, you had Liz Warren. You had all these. What about Bernie? Right? Remember him? That cuck, that nutless wonder? Oh, we had choices? Hey, guys. Guys, did you know we actually had choices in the Democratic primary? Yeah, I'm shocked, too. Turns out Democratic primary was a waste of time in 2020 because there was a whole movement to make sure anybody but Bernie and everybody that they threw at the wall, Kamala, didn't stick. It was utter disaster. Pete Buttigieg was a... Listen, that man can't fight himself out of a wet paper towel, okay? If we have a wet paper, one one little sheet from from uh from from a paper towel landing on Pete Buttigieg, that that boy's gonna be struggling all day, every day. Then you had bet on my stork who stands on tables, Devon, get the tables. You had Elizabeth Warren who was a constant liar. Never once have I ever seen a woman lie that much. Jesus Christ, come on. And then of course you had uh, Amy Klobuchar who threw things at people. And then you had Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, Bernie the Cuck Sanders. We had choices. We never had a choice. Voters never had a choice. It was the donors that chose. Choices that were all younger than Biden, <laughs> fresher and newer than Biden. And you know who y'all picked to be the president and the nominee? Joe Biden. <laughs> he beat all the young people. So, yes, we have a gerontocracy problem on the Democratic side. Way too many of these oldie goldies that don't seem to want to sit down and retire. But when given the choice between the young and fresh, and Joe Biden, y'all picked Joe Biden. <laughs> that was what you picked. No, no, we didn't. No, voters didn't pick that. It was the establishment that did. The DNC admitted that they are a private company, private corporation. They picked their guy. Obama on that Super Tuesday night had himself a nice ham sandwich, cold beers, and nope to Bernie. And Bernie, being the cuck, gave up. No one fought. Obama gave the thumbs down to anybody. They wanted to have Biden. That was their dog. It was the establishment that picked it. It's not that there's an old folks problem. Because there is. <clears throat> we have a corruption problem, too. They picked it. They're the ones that did this. Not the voters. Now, myself as a progressive and as an independent, I have no incentive to uh, back up the Democrats. You guys are on your own. So he's in there because Democrats actually picked him in the first place. So just keep that in mind that you've been given options in the past. And this is what you picked. Oh, wow. She is really having a meltdown. By the way, let's have democracy in the chat. Did you feel that the 2020 Democratic primary was just and fair? Type three for yes, Kit, it was fair. And the voters voted. Shame on you. 
Shame on you for standing up, up against democracy. Type four. Man, we didn't have a choice. Waste of time. I wonder how many fours will get in the chat. I wonder, I wonder. And nobody stepped up to choose to run against him in the primary. So once again, Democrats went out and voted and picked. If you try to undo that choice, like 57 million some odd Democrats voted in these primaries. So what are you going to do? You're going to just tell them, F off. We're going to pick somebody different. That's not him or Kamala Harris, who was on that ticket, too, on those ballots. That's not democracy. <laughs> this choice has been made. And so, again, unless he decides to walk away, this is your choice. It's like when you go to a wedding, you got chicken or fish. You can eat chicken or fish or just be hungry. Or like when I was growing up in my house, it's what mom made for dinner or go to bed. Those your choices. You, you don't always get choices that you love. You get what mom made for dinner or take your ass to bed. And in this case, it's either what mom made for dinner or Hitler. <laughs> Hitler! Ah! Look out, everybody. Run, it's Trump. This. I, I got to bring up this old joke. I'm sorry. I don't want to be playing the same tune again. But if we have an animator or somebody who has talent to, to draw or do animation, but it's this, this is, this is, this is that scenario I keep bringing up. You know, imagine you got a whole bunch of liberals are watching Rachel Maddow on TV. It's a dark, stormy night. <laughs> Thunder clouds in the background. Everybody is eating some organic, gluten free food while they watch Rachel Maddow foam at the mouth talking about Trump derangement syndrome. And then one of the liberals, maybe a blue-haired liberal with, with a ring in her nose or something like that, looks out the window and sees a man on top of a hill holding an axe. The lightning cracks and the man's gone. The liberal just rubs her eyes and just goes ahead, sits right back down with her friends, eating more of that gluten-free organic food while watching Rachel Maddow foam at the mouth screaming about Trump. But outside, footsteps are heard. And a man is getting closer and closer. It's Donald Trump. He's right outside the door. He picks up his axe. He knocks it down. The liberals panic and they scream because it's Trump. And like a Scooby-Doo scenario, Trump is chasing the liberals down the hallways, up the stairs, in the elevator, up, down, left, right, A, B, select, start. It's Trump chasing them. So it's either you got to vote for the potato, what mom had for dinner, or Hitler. Get choices if you love. You get what mom made for dinner or take your ass to bed. And in this case, it's either what mom made for dinner or Hitler. <laughs> Hitler! But there's more for this meltdown. These, these, these are not serious people. If Trump wins, we're doing this show in a camp somewhere. <laughs> I know three seconds in if Trump wins we're doing this show in a camp <laughs> hey listen man <laughs> you know what I hope I'm wrong about this but I could see a prediction if Trump wins get ready to see a news report of people panicking wanting to leave the country or get their passports just just be ready for a segment like that. If Trump wins, we're doing this show in a camp. If Trump wins, we're doing this show in a camp somewhere. You know, that's the reality of the world we live in right now. You know, more you, Joy, than me. I'm like on the second tier of people, maybe the third tier of people that are coming for. You're <laughs> Why'd you say that to her? That was a little, a, kind of a little bit racist. I don't know, a little bigoted, maybe. Oh, Joy, hey, you're, you're going to go to the camp first. Why is that? Uh, um... Well, I mean, I'm not going to go to the camp first because, you know, certain skin tone, right? Why, why is she going to the camp first? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. These people are not serious. Way up there. I mean, that's the truth. Michael Silk, you're gone. So here, the reality is. We... <laughs> why are you saying that? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> hey, all of you people are going to the camp first. Maybe maybe I'll join you guys later. What do you mean you people? This is one of those moments where what do you mean you people are going to the camps first? Uh well, well. Look, I I don't know what more to tell people. This election is not Trump versus Joe Biden. It is Trump no, versus no. democracy. It's Trump versus uh freedom. It's Trump versus self-determination. We're a constitutional republic. Say that to trigger a lib. It's Trump versus abortion. It's Trump versus women's health care. It's Trump versus climate change. It's Trump versus gun violence and saving lives from that. It's Trump versus 
us having a right to decide our future or Donald Trump and his minions in Project 2025, they deciding it. If- yes, Project 2025. Woogie, boogie, 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 boogie. But there's more of this. There's much more. CNN and their meltdown. Van Jones, how you feeling, buddy? Look, I'm I, just going to be honest. I mean, everybody comes on the air and says all this great stuff, but behind the scenes, it's full-scale panic. Um, people mm. are uh, passing around legal memos. Uh, PDFs are flying back and forth on WhatsApp trying to figure out what are the options, how can you replace Biden, how, how do you get him to do it in a way where he feels respected as he should be respected. You just say, hey, old dog, you got to go down. There you go. Or either that, the Democratic Party actually should have done its job and actually have a really fair and open primary. You know, give Dean Phillips and, yes, Marion Williamson and, to the time, RFK Jr. a chance. Am I forgetting anybody? Oh, yeah, Fat Tony. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Fat Tony himself. Who should Kamala Harris's uh, uh, vice president be? The conversation on air and the conversation off air are completely different. And so I, I, it's the same thing with you saw with, with the with the Trump situation where people would come on air and defend Trump. And then you talk to people and then we got a crazy candidate. We don't have a crazy candidate. We have a great candidate. We have a, a, a beautiful man. We have someone. Oh, he's a beautiful man. Joe Biden's a beautiful man as he craps his pants. Van Jones. Van Jones. Who loves this country. Hold on. I'm going to rewind that. But uh, Van Jones. You definitely remind me of that character from Django Unchained, who was the servant at uh, Candyland. Oh, Mr. Biden, you're so great. Why? Why is he so great? Why is he a beautiful man? He's been on the wrong side of history. He was against the civil rights movement. He was against busing and desegregation. He was against a woman's right to choose. He gladly prostituted himself to corporations. He wrote the crime bill, still proud of the crime bill, led us to the war in Iraq, voted in favor of it, to be more precise. Joe Biden has always been a corporate neoliberal hack fraud. The reason why we are in this nightmare is because of the policies he helped implement. He's not a beautiful man, but because you're following the orders, Van Jones, you have to say that he's a beautiful man candidate we have a great candidate we have a, a, a beautiful man we have someone who loves this country we have someone who has given his all i mean his all to the last drop for this country but he may not be able to get across the finish line and a re- mature party has to take that into account and that is what's happening and so look i i understand people want to you know uh, uh, uh defend him and protect him and give him their space and the dignity to make his own choice but there is a big conversation happening right now about how this happens not whether Yes, the big choice. And then if you want to see Larry Tribe cry, who's Larry Tribe? He was on BSDNC. This is a man who's crying. Don't cry, CNN. Don't cry, MSNBC. It'll be okay. Just don't be so triggered. Pelosi, just reacting to the ruling, put out a statement saying in part, quote, Today the Supreme Court has gone rogue with its decision, violating the foundational American principle that no one is above the law. The former president's claim of total presidential immunity is an insult to the vision of our founders who declared independence from a king. Um, so how dare you declare independence from a king? Anyways. What say you about how far reaching this is and how damaging to Jack Smith's prosecution? Let me speak at the broadest level for a moment. I certainly agree with former Speaker Pelosi and with Justice Sotomayor, that this is a devastating blow to our system of government. In fact, probably the most eloquent and elaborate dissent, which I haven't seen quoted in the press much, is that of Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, who said that it is a five alarm fire for self-government under democracy. And the reason is that the court was really flying the flag of the constitution upside down. It was suggesting that just because an act is official, that is, it's something that a president can do, but that others can't do, that creates a cloak of immunity. That's upside down. It is worse to use the cloak of presidential authority to commit ordinary crimes for which the rest of us would go to jail than it is to do things that are purely personal. So the sliver that has been left 
to Jack Smith. That is taking the threads of this indictment and in a hearing before Judge Chutkin, trying to show which ones, like contacts with Rudy Giuliani or certain discussions with uh, state officials, which ones are purely private, that's really a fig leaf. It is simply a way for the court to tap itself on the shoulder and say, we're not granting absolute immunity. And all this is because they're afraid of Trump. They're afraid. There's a fear. Biden, critics fear embolden Trump after Supreme Court immunity ruling. Now, all these pundits, they're crying and afraid, saying that they're going to go to camps or we're going to get Hitler in the White House. It's because they made it their bread and butter between 2016 and 2020, talking about impeachment of Trump, Russia collusion, everything they could. I mean, look, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump, but my goodness, how many court cases are they taking this man through? Jesus Christ. All these court cases, which are truly irrelevant and a waste of time, because if you really look at it, all of Congress, the United States Senate, and previous presidents should be facing the same amount of legal battles because these politicians are all corrupt. And you guys now are shocked that Trump could potentially come back against you. You do wrong. Wrong's going to come right back at you. If corporate media really wanted to do its job, they would have been holding all these politicians accountable. But they're afraid. They're afraid to do it because they're loyal stenographers and they know who pays them money. But now they know they can't lie, and so now they're projecting their fears, hoping that that fear will also impact and affect average Americans who suffer from Trump derangement syndrome. The Supreme Court decision giving presidents wide protection from facing charges after leaving office has sparked fears voiced by President Biden and Democratic critics that the former President Trump will be emboldened should he uh, be elected to a second term. Trump and allies have had more ambitious plans for a second term, pledging a more to, to more forcefully use the levers of power at their disposal. Which, by the way, who do you think opened the doorway for presidents to have more power? First name Dick, last name Cheney. Thanks, Dick. Wait. Way to see ahead of the game, Dick. Trump has also suggested that it would be fair game for him to seek revenge on adversaries if he's reelected, raising questions about both the extent to which the decision would shield Biden and whether it greenlights retribution sought by Trump. It was an issue immediately put front and center by Biden in the in, in a Monday night address. The American people must decide if they want to entrust the presidency to Donald Trump, knowing he will uh, knowing he will even be more emboldened to do whatever he pleases whenever he wants to do it. For all practical purposes, today's decisions almost certainly means that there are virtually no limits on what a president can do, to which I have said before the president, previous presidents have all committed crimes. All of the presidents have. From good old GW all the way up to now. There's no such thing as an honest politician. A politician with a clean slate. That doesn't exist. Just like Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, the Tooth Fairy, and Leprechauns. And yes, even old good old Santa Claus. That don't exist. And I'm supposed to be afraid of Trump? And these people now are afraid. And it's reporters like this that said, if you don't eat what mama served, you're going to get Hitler. You, you don't always get choices if you love. You get what mom made for dinner, or take your ass to bed. And in this case, it's either what mom made for dinner or Hitler. If you don't eat the food, first name Adolf, last name Hitler. Here! Here! In, in, your, in your house. These are the people that we entrust to tell the news. These are the quote-unquote authoritative sources that big tech and corporate media favors. These are the ones that have helped shape policy. And now the world's coming crashing down. You know, I said in the previous segment that I hope the meltdown isn't too bad. But honestly, I really want to see these people cry. I just want to see them panic. I want to see adult pretenders portray and project their fears. I want the whole world to remember who they are because I don't think they're going to keep their composure. I don't think they're going to keep it together. So let's have a prediction in a hypothetical scenario, because again, at the end of the day, it's up to the American people on how they're going to vote and doesn't turn. If they throw enough votes, the electoral college will then decide for them who, who got the most votes and they'll go to their candidate of choice. 
let's have democracy. Let's have democracy in the chat. In a hypothetical scenario, should Trump win? Do you think these news reporters will keep their composure? Type five for yes, kid. They're professionals. They're going to know what they're going to do. They're going to keep it together, and they're going to be on point. A type six, no. I think some of them are really going to have some hissy fits or cry or melt down or do their own personal social media meltdown. It's going to be funny. They're going to they're, they're going to lose all composure. I wonder how many sixes we'll get in the chat. I wonder, I wonder. Type, type, type in the comment section below.